Now let's uh, move on today's, to today's uh, perspective. And their aim is to produce, well, a powerful statement to world leaders from the young people of the world to try to raise ambition to fight climate change and to save the planet. That is the aim of the world's mock COP. It is an online event. It's being held uh, this week by young people from across the globe to come up with ideas to tackle climate justice, education, health, green jobs and carbon reduction targets. Now, the idea of Mock COP to partly replace COP26, the world's climate change conference, which should have happened in Glasgow, Scotland at the beginning of the month, it's uh, been put off until next year due to coronavirus. Well, joining me now from Rome is uh, Lavinia Iovina. She's an award-winning 14-year-old activist who's become well-known for calling citizens and political uh, leaders as well to take action. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Firstly, um, I mean, Mock Cop is well underway, isn't it? It runs for uh, almost another week now. You've got 350 delegates from 150 countries. Tell us how it's going, and are you confident that at the end of it you'll be able to produce this um, strong message for world leaders? I think at the moment we are going in direction we have always planned. Delegates are really, really looking forward to their statements. They're looking forward to the resolution that's going to come at the end of the conferences. And they're really, really determined and have a lot of willpower. So we're really, really confident that this will bring us to have that, that perspective that was like the most collective perspective that we wanted to achieve during Mock COP26. So we're really, really hopeful and we think we're going in the right way. What kind of ideas uh, are you coming up with? What kind of things are you discussing? Um, we are discussing mainly on the general topics that you mentioned before. We have had um, two panels uh, up until this point. Today is the last panel where we are discussing policy ideas. And in general, we are kind of trying to rewrite and review everything that has been written up until this point as it wasn't that convincing. So we've been talking about climate justice, about climate education, about the fact that no one knows in depth what is happening about climate resilient livelihoods, the fact that we are facing um, the effects of the things that we did 20 years ago right now. And therefore, even if we did everything we could right now, we wouldn't solve the climate crisis in two days. So we have to start learning how to adapt to these changes and how to protect people. This has been a really, really important topic during panels and discussions is how you protect people during this transition and during this crisis, because we have to bear in mind that we're living a crisis and this is threatening humanity like never before. So these um, have been the general discussions. And in general, we're really focusing on what could be done to make everything better, because right now it's not OK. Why do you think young people are so important in this? Um, I think young people are really important right now and during this topics because they are the only ones that have had the courage to bring these topics under the eyes of everyone like never did before. So we are telling world leaders that we are failing because we know we are. And it, we don't need to be scientists to be saying this because we are basing on science. I think young people are really important right now in this um, climate crisis because we are uh, saying things without any, um, I don't know, being as drastic and as powerful as never before. So young people have that determination that could really bring to change at the moment. So that's why we're really important. And why do you think or how do you think um, young people such as uh, yourself can actually get that message across? I mean, how do you get adults, basically, who are the people who are in power to actually listen to a word you're saying? Because it's all very well for all of you to sit and discuss everything. But if nothing comes out of it at the end, there's not much point, is there? I think um, how you deliver things really plays a role. Because as we all know, politicians don't want to hear certain things, or at least not in that way. Unless they feel it's convenient for them to do something, they will likely not do it. So it's really important for how you deliver things. We have um, trying to keep in contact with politicians and stuff. We've been trying to get things together to get the message how we want it to be delivered, which is that we are failing and we're not willing to accept this failure anymore and that people should acknowledge this, should acknowledge the fact that we are failing in order to change, because otherwise we will be still going towards the things that we're going right now. We will still be going in this direction, and this means going towards extinction, and we don't want that. I do think that politicians don't want that either, even though if right now it seems like the most convenient thing, because it actually isn't. So the way you deliver things could actually 
make a way through and be awakening call. I'd like to talk about you as well, Livia. Why um, is this the issue that you've become so um, passionate about? I mean, there are all sorts of other issues as well, which which could be the the thing that you're um, campaigning for. Why climate? As the importance of the moment we're living in, um, the importance of this historical moment, that everything we do and we don't do right now will have impacts on others in 20, 50, 100 years' time. Recognise the fact that this is the last chance we have. Unfortunately, we have been um, born um, in this decade, which is the only decade we have to save ourselves. And also, I do recognise the fact that the climate crisis is the crisis that is causing so many different things. And the climate crisis of what is making it so threatening will actually solve loads of other problems that are now in our society. So the fact that the climate crisis is connected to everything else, key point in fighting against it and in just bringing the need for everything to be done in order to combat this, because we will be going in so much a better way if we do combat this and we're going to solve so many things. So that's why I think um, I got involved mainly in facing the climate crisis. And do you think it's something you'll continue to uh, follow uh, through into adult life as well? Of course, this is a fight that cannot be done for one year or two years. As, as I said before, it's something that we will see the effects or the um, good things of in 20, 30, 50 years' time. So it's not something you can start to do today and stop in one week. It is something that you have to commit to every day because it's such a big thing. Like we're talking about a crisis and sometimes we don't recognise it, but it's something so bigger than us. And then you don't just start today and live tomorrow. If you want to be committed into fighting for something, into bringing something forward, you have to be committed to do it for the rest of your life. And I'm really looking forward to it. And how do you feel about the, um, I mean, some of the major points that obviously affect climate change so much uh, that are around at the moment? I mean, I'm thinking of two just in the last 24 hours. On the one hand, we've just been reporting about um, Joe Biden naming uh, John Kerry to be his uh, climate czar, if you like. Perhaps the Democrats getting back in may, may help your cause. On the other hand, uh, we were hearing yesterday that the uh, coronavirus, although obviously a lot of less people have been flying, it doesn't mean that there's been a, a massive dent, does it, in carbon emissions? Um, I think in general, we're trying to do something. The effects of the climate crisis, we could see them like literally every day. We heard about floods, we've heard about droughts, we've heard about hurricanes due to the climate crisis. And as I said, these are not stopping. I do think that some measures that have been implemented at NASA, as we talked before as the UN envoy. Um, but I also do know that lots of other things are wrong. For example, the cap had just um, starting to be approved um, last week, and this is going to go against everything we've been trying to build up until this moment. So I do think we are doing something good, but I do also think this is not enough, and maybe we have to realise that we could be doing this if we had 20 years' time to do everything we need, but we don't, so we have to rush, and the perception of this emergency is still not as high. Lavinia, good to talk to you on the program today. Lavinia Iovine, uh, award-winning 14-year-old uh, activist taking part uh, in that uh, mock COP conference at the moment. Thanks very much for joining us there from Rome. The main headlines today then. For the first time, Donald Trump accepts that the transition to Joe Biden should begin. He's confirmed the agency overseeing the handover must do what needs to be done, but he said he will continue to contest his election defeat. And France's interior minister describes as shocking amateur images from central Paris last night as police used tear gas to dismantle a migrant camp set up by volunteers just a few hours earlier.